Church Cathedral. This is Evening Prayer and a Meditation for Thursday, July the 20th. Evening Prayer begins on page 117. Yours is the day, O God, yours also the night. You established the moon and the sun. You fixed all the boundaries of the earth. You made both summer and winter. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, We sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 37, verses 19 through 42. The Lord cares for the lives of the godly and their inheritance shall last forever. They shall not be ashamed in bad times, and in days of famine they shall have enough. As for the wicked, they shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord, like the glory of the meadows, shall vanish. They shall vanish like smoke. The wicked borrow and do not repay, but the righteous are generous in giving. Those who are blessed by God shall possess the land, But those who are cursed by God shall be destroyed. Our steps are directed by the Lord. The Lord strengthens those in whose way he delights. If they stumble, they shall not fall headlong, for the Lord holds them by the hand. I have been young, and now I am old. But never have I seen the righteous forsaken, or their children begging for bread. The righteous are always generous in their lending, and their children shall be a blessing. Turn from evil, and do good, and dwell in the land forever. For the Lord loves justice. He does not forsake his faithful ones. They shall be kept safe forever. But the offspring of the wicked shall be destroyed. The righteous shall possess the land, and dwell in it forever. The mouth of the righteous utters wisdom, and their tongue speaks what is right. The law of their God is in their heart, and their footsteps shall not falter. The wicked spy on the righteous and seek occasion to kill them. The Lord will not abandon them to their hand, nor let them be found guilty when brought to trial. Wait upon the Lord and keep his way. He will raise you up to possess the land, and when the wicked are cut off, you will see it. I have seen the wicked in their arrogance, flourishing like a tree in full leaf. I went by, and behold, they were not there. I searched for them, but they could not be found. Mark those who are honest. Observe the upright, for there is a future for the peaceable. Transgressors shall be destroyed, one and all. The future of the wicked is cut off. But the deliverance of the righteous comes from the Lord. He is their stronghold in time of trouble. The Lord will help them and rescue them. The Lord will rescue them from the wicked and deliver them, because they seek refuge in him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. David hid himself in the field, and when the new moon came, the king sat at the feast to eat. The king sat upon his seat, as at other times, upon the seat by the wall. Jonathan stood while Abner sat by Saul's side, but David's place was empty. Saul did not say anything that day, for he thought, Something has befallen him. He is not clean. Surely he is not clean. But on the second day, the day after the new moon, David's place was empty. And Saul said to his son Jonathan, Why has the son of Jesse not come to the feast either yesterday or today? Jonathan answered Saul, David earnestly asked leave of me to go to Bethlehem. He said, Let me go, for our family is holding a sacrifice in the city, and my brother has commanded me to be there. So now, if I have found favor in your sight, let me get away and see my brothers. For this reason, 
he has not come to the king's table. Then Saul's anger was kindled against Jonathan. He said to him, You son of a perverse, rebellious woman, do I not know that you have chosen the son of Jesse to your own shame and to the shame of your mother's nakedness? For as long as the son of Jesse lives upon the earth, neither you nor your kingdom shall be established. Now send and bring him to me, for he shall surely die. Then Jonathan answered his father, Saul, why should he be put to death? What has he done? But Saul threw his spear at Jonathan to strike him. So Jonathan knew that it was the decision of his father to put David to death. Jonathan rose from the table in fierce anger and ate no food on the second day of the month, for he was grieved for David and because his father had disgraced him. In the morning Jonathan went out into the field to the appointment with David, and with him was a little boy. He said to the boy, Run and find the arrows that I, sh that I shoot. As the boy ran, he shot an arrow beyond him. When the boy came to the place where Jonathan's arrow had fallen, Jonathan called after the boy and said, Is the arrow not beyond you? Jonathan called after the boy, Hurry, be quick, and do not linger. So Jonathan's boy gathered up the arrows and came to his master. But the boy knew nothing. Only Jonathan and David knew the arrangement. Jonathan gave his weapons to the boy and said to him, Go and carry them to the city. As soon as the boy had gone, David rose from beside the stone heap and prostrated himself with his face to the ground. He bowed three times. They kissed each other and wept with each other, and David wept the more. Then Jonathan said to David, Go in peace, since both of us have sworn in the name of the Lord, saying, The Lord shall be between me and you, and between my descendants and your descendants forever. He got up and left, and Jonathan went into the city. The Word of the Lord. So we continue with the story of King David, and in this episode from the, the reading from 1 Samuel, we have David who is wound up on the wrong side of King Saul. King Saul is looking for an excuse to kill David, and David and Saul's son Jonathan have become close friends. This angers Saul to a great degree, to, to the extent that Saul even tries to throw a spear at his own son because his own son uh, has maintained a friendship with David. What we hear in this, uh, in this reading is Jonathan and David have sort of made an arrangement where Jonathan will give him a sort of coded message that if Jonathan thinks that Saul is actually really out to kill him, then David needs to escape. But if, if Saul doesn't really have bad intentions toward David, he can come back in safety. As Jonathan has discovered, Saul is looking to kill David. And what this particular episode raises, at least for me, is this idea that if we're seizing power, or that if we, if we are concerned only with power and the sort of the aggrandizement of our own um, close relations or ourselves, that often leads us to believe that others are going to try to take power away from us. At least from what the record of Scripture tells us, David was never looking to displace Saul. Now, the reality might be a little different uh, historically, but the scriptural record tells us that David was never looking to replace Saul and that Saul began to sort of imagine that David was a threat. And Saul began to imagine that David was trying to take everything that Saul had. And a lot of times what happens when we find ourselves in a position of power or we're trying to seize power for ourselves, we wind up conjuring these ideas that someone's trying to take what we've got. And so we begin to look at even close friends, at close relations, with suspicion. And that anything that we see that, that make, makes us think, oh, so-and-so is trying to take what I have, so-and-so is trying to seize what, what I rightfully have claimed for myself, that begins to cause us to unravel. And in the extreme end of things, we can even wind up turning on those who are closest to us. So we, we see Saul turns on his own son, turns on the one who is supposed to be his successor, his heir, the heir to his kingdom. Saul turns his anger against his own son, Jonathan. And if we're not careful about how we approach our relationship with power, with our relationship with money, whatever it might be, we can wind up 
turning our anger, venting our frustrations on those who are closest to us just because we have conjured up in our minds this, this false idea of who other people are and what other people are trying to get from us or do to us. So I think we are always to be on guard to see whether or not we're trying, we're trying to see something for ourselves, whatever it might be, fame, money, power, you name it. If we're trying to go after these things and we look at other people as, as being our competitors that we need to get one up on or best or get out of the way, that is going to wind up hurting not just them, but everyone around us is going to suffer as well because we will eventually turn our suspicious eye on those even closest to us. As followers of Christ, we are meant to live together in harmony and not be always looking for evidence of, of someone trying to undermine us. We ought always to be trying to look for ways to come together to serve one another and to build up our communities in love. So let's keep doing that. Amen. We continue with the Song of Simeon. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations, and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, we entreat you, O Lord. That your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill, we entreat you, O Lord. That we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses, we entreat you, O Lord. That there may be peace to your church and to the whole world, we entreat you, O Lord that we may depart this life in your faith and fear and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ, we entreat you, O Lord, that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of all your saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ, we entreat you, O Lord. O Lord, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you and grant that they may know and understand what things they ought to do and also may have grace and power faithfully to accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Be our light in the darkness, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of your only Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. O God and Father of all, whom the whole heavens adore, let the whole earth also worship you, all nations obey you, all tongues confess and bless you, and men and women everywhere serve you and love you, love you and serve you in peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This time I invite your own intercessions and thanksgivings.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the commonwealth of humanity, peace and concord, and to all his servants, life everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.